How to use the sixth edition of the Australian Injectable Drugs Handbook. The Australian Injectable Drugs Handbook is a reference to help you prepare an injectable medicine, know how to give the medicine, and know which fluids and other medicines a medicine is compatible with. It will also tell you how to store the medicine. It has the information you commonly need before giving an injectable medicine to a patient. It is not a compendium of every conceivable pharmacological and pharmaceutical aspect of the medicines listed. It does not give information about what the medicine is used for, dose ranges or adverse effects. There are other books that do that. This book is purely about how to make and how to give injectable medicines to patients. The book is mostly for adult patients. There is some information for some of the medicines under the heading IV use for infants and children. This information is limited. Make sure you know your hospital's own policy and procedures and where to find them. The hospital may have its own protocols on how to give medicines that are different to in the handbook. Use the handbook in conjunction with your hospital's own policies and procedures. The handbook isn't the be-all and end-all. It will not encompass all situations and all patients. Sound clinical judgment is required when giving injectable medicines to patients. If you're not sure of something, ask a pharmacist, pharmacy department, the product information or medicines information service for further information or advice. I'm now going to explain each of the headings of the monographs. We call each section of information about one drug a monograph. Name. This is the Australian approved medicine name. In this case, it's labetalol hydrochloride. Synonyms. This is other names that the medicine might be known by. This could be abbreviations, even though we don't want people to use abbreviations the name of the medicine in another country, or the chemical name. In this case, there are no synonyms. But we can jump a couple of pages and see an example of a medicine that has synonyms. In this case, Luronidase can also be known as Alronidase, alpha l iduronidase and Luronidase RCH. Trade name. This is a list of all the brand names that are available in Australia. In this case, the trade name is the same as the name. But if we go back to Laronidase, we can see that the trade name is Aldurazyme. We may not have all brands listed as new ones become available. If the brand you have is not listed, check with a pharmacist to make sure that the information in the book can be used for the brand you have. It is important to note here that the book does not provide information on brand or product equivalents. Sometimes similar drugs are included in the same monographs. An example is the epoetins. Epoetin alpha, beta and lambda are very similar, but they are not interchangeable. Drug class. This is a description of the therapeutic category of the medicine. In Labetalol's case, it's a beta blocker. Availability. Here we list all the strengths of the medicine that are available in Australia. We also list all the ingredients in the medicine. All liquids are listed as the total amount of medicine per total volume of the vial, syringe or bottle. In this example, it contains 100 mg of labetalol hydrochloride per 20 ml vial. It also contains the other ingredients, anhydrous dextrose, disodium editate, methylparaben, propylparaben, citric acid monohydrate and sodium hydroxide. All these extra ingredients help keep the medicine stable. It also contains water, but the book doesn't list water as an ingredient. Electrolyte monographs are also listed with the amount of electrolytes in millimole and milliequivalent per mil. For example, in the potassium dihydrogen phosphate monograph.
pH is the pH of the medicine in the vial or when dissolved if we have the information. The reason that this is here is because it might give you an idea of how compatible it is with other solutions. Solutions with very different pH values are less likely to be compatible than those with similar pH values. Medicines with a pH less than 5.5 or greater than 8.5 can cause tissue damage if extravasated. The pH of labetalol hydrochloride is 3 to 4.5. That means it's acidic. Preparation. This is where the handbook explains how to reconstitute powders or dilute concentrated solutions. It also tells you other bits of information like shake well before use or allow to reach room temperature before use. It doesn't give detailed information on how to make infusions. That comes in the next section. If nothing needs to be done in this first stage, then it will say not applicable, like in the case of labetalol hydrochloride. An example of something that requires preparation is lenagrastim. In this case, it says to reconstitute the vial with one mil of water for injections. That is, inject one mil of water for injections into the vial and then shake gently for five seconds until dissolved. You should always check to make sure there are no particles in the solution after it has dissolved, or if it is an unusual colour. If there are particles, or it is an unusual colour, you should discard the vial. This has two different instructions for IM and IV use. For IM, it says to reconstitute it with lignocaine because the injection is very painful. For IV use, it is reconstituted with water for injections. Here in the special notes, there is a warning to make sure you don't inject the solution made with lignocaine intravenously. For many of the antibiotics, there is a table listing different reconstitution amounts depending on the dose and concentration that you want. For example, if you have a 1 gram dose, you can reconstitute with 10 ml of water for injections. However, if the dose is less than that, you can use 9.6 ml to get a concentration of 100 mg per ml. This will make it easier to calculate the dose required. So, if the dose is for 600 mg, it is simple to calculate that you give 6 mil. Administration. This lists all the ways that the injection can be given as well as instructions on how to make the infusion. The headings are IM injection, which means intramuscular injection. Subcut injection means an injection under the skin. It can either be an intermittent subcutaneous injection or a continuous subcutaneous infusion. IV injection means for injection directly into a vein. For labetalol hydrochloride, the monograph states that for both IM injection and subcut injection, it is not recommended. There are instructions for IV injection, so you know that it is okay to give by IV injection. You can inject it slowly over two minutes. IV infusion is okay too, and there are extra instructions that tell you how to make up an infusion. In this case, it says to add 40 ml, that is, it contains 200 mg of labetalol, to 160 ml or 250 ml of a compatible fluid, depending on the concentration of solution you want. 1 mg per ml might be a good concentration to use because it's easy to calculate an appropriate infusion rate. You can find out what fluids are compatible by looking at the compatibility section below. We'll cover that in more detail in a minute. You can also see that the labetalol hydrochloride infusion should be started at a rate of 2 mg per minute and then adjusted according to blood pressure response. The section on stability tells you how to store the medicine when it's in the vial and after it has been diluted. It also tells you how long it lasts after it's diluted. When medicines are diluted, they can start to break down. 
even if a medicine would take a long time to break down in solution, the book usually says a solution is stable for less than 24 hours. The reason is that bacteria could have been introduced during the reconstitution or diluting process and if left for longer than 24 hours could build up enough numbers to harm the patient. Some medicines are very unstable and should be used immediately. Some state health or hospital policies might require you to only use injections that have been freshly made up and throw them away if you don't use it immediately. If you can store diluted medicines, make sure it is labelled correctly. You can find out more about labelling diluted injections properly in the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare's publication, National Recommendations for User Applied Labelling of Injectable Medicines, Fluids and Lines. Here's a link for you. In the back of the book, in the anti-neoplastic section, some of the medicines have stability information for storing longer than 24 hours. This is because they are made in a special sterile room and their stability has been tested. In the example of labetalol hydrochloride, it says the vial should be stored at 2 to 30 degrees Celsius. That means you can keep it in the fridge or out of the fridge. Once it is diluted, you can keep it up to 24 hours at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. That means in a fridge. The compatibility section tells you what the medicine can and can't be mixed with, within reason. In the labetalol hydrochloride monograph, we can see that it is compatible with glucose 5%, glucose in sodium chloride solutions, Hartmann's, Ringer's and sodium chloride. Because of this, we know it can be mixed with any of these to make the infusion that is described above. So, for instance, I might choose to make the infusion up with sodium chloride, and because it is in the compatible section, I know it's OK. If I think I might like to make it up with sodium bicarbonate, I can see that it is incompatible. But what if for some reason I want to make it up with sodium chloride 0.45%? Can I? The answer is I can't tell from this monograph. It's not listed, so I just don't know and cannot assume it is safe to do so. So in this case, I'd have to ask a pharmacist, the pharmacy department or medicines information service if it's OK. The compatible via Y-site section means that it can be given with some medicines running through another line. So in this instance, I know that if a line is running an infusion of clindamycin, there will be no incompatibility to run the labetalol hydrochloride injection via Y-site. If I wanted to check if it was OK to give with a cyclovir via Y-site, I can see that it is not OK because it is listed as incompatible. What if I wanted to give it via Y-site on a line running fluconazole? I check the compatible via Y-site and fluconazole is not listed. I check the incompatible medicines and it's not listed. It's always worth checking the fluconazole monograph too. So I check that too and it's not listed. Is it safe to give? The answer is I don't know and it's safest to assume that it cannot be mixed. If I really need to mix it, I'm going to have to check with a pharmacist, the pharmacy department or medicines information service first. Even if the book lists two medicines as compatible via Y-site, it's a good idea to check the line for any changes, like cloudiness or colour changes. If this happens, stop the infusions and let the pharmacist or pharmacy department know what happened. If you see that two medicines are compatible, it's not a green light to give them both together, especially as two infusions. In most cases, they should be run as two separate infusions and administered according to their respective monograph or pharmacist instructions. There are some medicines that are not included in the incompatible section that should never be mixed with other medicines because they are so unstable. They include diazepam, diazoxide and phenytoin. This is why it's always worth checking both medicine monographs.
There is also some information on compatibility in a syringe of two medicines. This is for if two medicines are mixed in a syringe together before giving and means they are stable together for up to one hour unless stated otherwise. There is not a lot of information about this for most medicines and we usually wouldn't recommend you mix two medicines in a syringe. Medicines are commonly combined together in syringe drivers for palliative care, but syringe driver information has not been included in the handbook. If you need to find out more information about compatibility of multiple medicines in syringe drivers in palliative care, contact a pharmacist, pharmacy department or medicines information service. As briefly mentioned before, the incompatible section lists all the other medicines that are incompatible with the medicine when they are mixed together. Medicines can be incompatible if they form a haze, precipitate or colour change when mixed together or if one or both medicines lose potency when mixed together. If conflicting information has been reported, so maybe one reference book says it's okay to mix, another says it's not, then we have removed it from the list altogether. It does not list whether there are drug interactions, that is problems when the person takes the medicines together. That information can be found in other references. The special notes section gives you extra information to consider when giving the medicine. It might list infusion related or injection related reactions that might happen while giving the medicine but not all adverse effects of the medicine itself. For example, the labetalol hydrochloride monograph explains that it can cause orthostatic hypotension. This is a particularly important side effect to consider when you are giving the infusion to the person. They should be lying down. The monograph will not mention things that are not related to injecting the drug, such as that labetalol can cause insomnia and nightmares. This information can be found in other references. The special notes section is also where we list all the special supply arrangements. For labetalol hydrochloride, it is that it has restricted use. It's also where we put warnings about common allergens such as penicillins, sulfites and latex. It's really important to read the special notes sections. It may contain special safety warnings that may result in harm to the patient if you aren't careful. If sodium content of the medicine is available, it will be listed here. Any special monitoring of the patient that is required during the injection or infusion and for a period afterward is also included in the special notes.